Hey folks, we're gonna talk about meiosis in this video. If you haven't yet watched the mitosis video, I highly recommend you watch that one before you watch this one. I'll do some comparisons throughout and it's helpful if you know the process of mitosis and how the smaller parts work. Um, so getting into meiosis here. Um, meiosis is similar to mitosis in the fact that we are going to be duplicating genetic material and sharing it and with the hope of eventually increasing the number of cells that we actually make. However, with mitosis, we were taking one cell, duplicating those chromosomes and the genetic information and making two cells. With meiosis, what we'll be doing is taking one cell and we'll actually be generating four different gametes or sex cells with different genetic information. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how we actually go about generating that different genetic information. And so where we're going to start is the exact same place that we started with mitosis in that we're going to start with interface. And what happens in interphase here, what we talked about with meiosis is that we have the genetic material being duplicated. Okay, so what we're gonna start with in interphase is we're gonna start with one chromosome that looks like this, and we're gonna start with one chromosome that looks like this here. And so what we'll have in this cell is we'll have our nuclear membrane present and still there. We'll have those centrosomes up at the top of the cell. So in the same way that we had for mitosis, we're gonna have the centrosomes up at the top of the cell. And then we're gonna have the chromosomes, chromosomes present with inside the cell here. Now, what's worth noting here is that this is called a 2N cell, or it's called a diploid cell. And basically a diploid cell is a cell that has all of the necessary genetic material to create a living, functioning human being. Um, we're going to eventually create, the goal is to get out of 2N cells and into just N cells. And those would be like the sex cells where they need to combine with uh, another sex cell in order to form a diploid cell. So eventually what we're gonna create is a haploid cell, which is a 1N or just an N cell. And the goal there will be for us to create um, a sex cell. So after inf interphase takes place, the main thing that's happening throughout interphase is that the DNA is being copied. The DNA is being copied. And over the course of that time, what we'll have is we'll have a new cell present, a new cell present. And in that cell, what we'll see is we will see our red chromosome being duplicated and we'll also see our blue chromosome being duplicated. And now at this stage, we are at the stage of prophase. So first stage is interphase. We are now in prophase and with meiosis, we actually need I guess you could say we need mitosis to happen twice, but we need these stages to happen twice. And so the name of this is actually prophase one. And so what happens is these chromosomes are eventually going to be paired up is what's gonna happen at prophase. So the chromosomes, chromosomes are paired up. And so what we saw with mitosis was we saw the cells actually lining themselves up vertically like this. We saw the cells lining up vertically. Here, instead, with meiosis, the cells are smart enough to know that we need to line up the chromosomes. And when that happens throughout the stage of prophase, there's gonna be something called crossing over or recombination that's going to be occurring. And in essence, what's happening here is that, so recombination. What's gonna be happening is that these pairs are going to be crisscrossing and sharing information with one another. So this red leg and this blue leg might actually be switching spots on the cell. And I'll show you that in the next step here. So that is what happens during prophase is that we have recombination occurring, recombination. Once we get to the next stage, the next stage is metaphase one. We, if you remember the um, mitosis video, we said that metaphase was sometimes known as the middle phase because that's where everything is going to line up in the middle. 
So what will happen by the time we get to this middle phase is that there will be no nuclear envelope or no nuclear membrane, so no nuclear envelope. And we'll start to see those spindle fibers at the end start to actually form. And I said last time that we would see some crossing over. And so now what we're going to have is we're going to have one of our chromosomes that looks like this. And we're going to have our other chromosome that now looks like this. And so you can see that they've actually started to share information with one another. So these spindle fibers are coming out, grabbing onto chromosomes. Now, obviously, there would be a lot more than just one chromosome doing this. But for simplicity's sake, we're going to show this one chromosome here. So they're going to start to be pulled apart throughout metaphase. They're going to be line up at the middle, so middle, and they're going to be pulled apart. The next stage here that we have after metaphase is we have anaphase. And again, we have two stages of anaphase, so this is anaphase 1. And what will start to happen more and more throughout anaphase 1 is that we will start to have those chromosomes, the new chromosomes that we created. So we created one that looked like this, and then we have the leg here, this leg here, and then we had this chromosome here. What we'll start to see is that we'll start to see these guys start to actually get pulled further and further apart to the opposite sides by those spindle fibers. So by those spindle fibers that are shooting out their little spider webs and pulling apart these two chromosomes. Okay, the next stage that happens then after that, after that stage has occurred, is that we, sometimes people represent it this way, but we're gonna get telophase and cytokinesis. Kinesis. And again, it's gonna be telophase one because we need to do telophase twice. And so what will start to happen here is those new cells that we have are going to get pulled far enough apart. The nuclear membrane will start to reform again. So we're going to start to draw this dotted nuclear membrane. That'll start to reform again. And we had this guy here. Oops. We had this guy here. And the leg. And we have this guy here. So those are our two chromosomes that we've been bringing down. And so we'll start to generate two different cells when the cell pinches in the middle here. After we have telophase, and, telophase 1 and cytokinesis happening, we are going to end up now having two different cells that we're going to be talking about. So I'm going to draw for you one circle here and the second circle over here. And what will happen after that is we will start to enter now prophase, prophase 2. And what happens in prophase is that we still have the nuclear membrane present. But that nuclear membrane is going to start to break down. And what we're going to end up with is these two cells that we've had since the beginning. Now each in their own individual cells, but that nuclear membrane nuclear membrane will start to break down break down and so that'll allow us to then advance to the next stage of this which if you remember from mitosis the next stage of this is to go back into metaphase where everything lines up in the middle so in metaphase 2 In metaphase 2, again, we have the nuclear membrane completely dissolved. We have our two different cells present. We have our two different cells present. Nuclear membrane starts to dissolve, and we're going to have those spindle fibers, spindle fibers, those centrosomes at the end, and they're going to start to pull apart. They're going to start to pull apart these new chromosomes that we have. So these centrosomes here are going to start to pull apart these chromosomes. And the second stage of meiosis is a lot more similar to, the, uh, to mitosis, pulled apart chromosomes. OK, 
okay? They're gonna start to pull these two apart slowly but surely. And so what we'll get then is the next stage and our next stage here is to go into anaphase two. Anaphase two. And in anaphase two, what we can see is this really, really interesting process here where in our two cells, in our two cells, we're going to see that now we can start to predict that each cell is going to have slightly different information from the other ones. So if we look at all of these cells, what we'll see is that this chromosome up here is going to be ripped in half. And so one of our chromosomes will look like this and the other one will look like this where it'll have that blue tail and the red piece as well and then in the other cell when we scroll over to that other cell what we'll see is we're gonna have a blue top and a red bottom all on that one chromosome and then we'll have a pure blue over there and so you can start to think about this being like getting some of your different genes from mom and dad if all of the red ones are all of your mother's genes and let's say that this current chromosome is coding for the type of nose that you have if you're able to get this just red one well you're going to get your mother's exact nose if you get a combination let's say your mom has a small nose your dad has a big nose you're going to get kind of a medium nose same thing here maybe a medium nose with slightly bigger nostrils than this one over here and then this will be exactly your dad's nose and so you can start to see how this information is being split apart and differentiated and recombined. Remember, we used that word recombination earlier. And so eventually what we'll end up getting then after that is we'll have the final stage, which is telophase. I should draw them like this. We're going to end up having telophase 2 and cytokinesis again. So we have telophase two and cytokinesis. We have those cells being cut off. And in this case, it's both of the two different cells. We have that nuclear membrane starting to be reformed in both of the different cells. The nuclear membrane starting to be reformed. And over the process of telophase, that nuclear membrane will be reformed. And we can see then that we'll have our pure blue chromosome over there, our pure red here. We had the red top, blue tip, red top, blue bottom in this one here, and then we had it flipped in the other one with the blue top and the red bottom. And you can see that we're gonna now have four different cells. Once cytokinesis has finished its work, what we're gonna have then is four different cells. And this goes back to the idea, the original idea that we talked about. So there's one cell, here's two cells. Here's three cells and we'll have a fourth cell as well. And we'll see that each and every one of those cells now has a fully formed nucleus inside of them. So these are my nuclei. And we'll see that they each have all different pieces of information. Blue top, blue bottom, and then red and red. And they all are gonna have different pieces of information they don't have enough information to make a fully functional human being. And so these cells are now just N, or they're better known as haploid cells. And these would be like the egg cells or the sperm cells that us as humans are able to make. That they're carrying half of the genetic information that is now going to be given to a partner and shared with a partner. And so you can see you're getting half of the information and you're getting different halves of those information. Um, and so that is how my osis works.